Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast, a daily study to Srimad Bhagavatam. With your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator of the Bhakti Center in New York, Kostubadas. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Super Soul Farm. We just had a big Wisdom of the Sages meeting yesterday, brainstorming our mission statement, our vision statement, fine-tuning our offering. It was exciting, and I did not fall asleep. No, you got a little weird there. I got a little point. weird. <laughs> went into I the can't corner of the couch. <laughs> I got in the corner of a couch in a fetal position at one point and said, I'm doing good. Keep going. <laughs> but I didn't use my treadmill, which usually in any meeting over five minutes, I'm on a treadmill. Um, I did break out a long iron club. and start I did. I, I brought my Indian mace out and I worked that for a while during the meeting. I, I did stretches, various stretches. But you made it through. You made it through. Yeah, I was, there are certain parts where... It was really just two of us and not three of us. <laughs> you know what? I love you both, but I can't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm dreaming of a planting, pruning, and tractors. That's what my brain was going through. My new stone wall for 2024. But anyway, it's great to have Linda, Linda, Linda up here. She's wonderful. Assist, right, she, she was ordered by Radha Swami. Mm. Isn't it great to get an order from Radha Swami? Wonderful. Radha Swami ordered her to serve the podcast. All right. And, uh, and I mean, she she was just she wasn't just called out of the out of the a crowd. You do this. She, she was like, I really want to give my life to service. And mm. it was great. It was, it's been a great connection. But yeah. So how are you? Good. All good. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, tonight, at, I think one or two in the morning, me and Mayor and my kids were driving south. 15 hours to Alachua, Florida, for the Gore Praneem Festival and. Uh, we're going to do the show tomorrow live from the minivan. Isn't it easier just to fly? And it's not so expensive. Yeah, well, you know, it, we're, um, we are giving, my son has purchased a minivan. Oh, so you bring the van. We're down. driving the van. We're flying, we're back, flying back. I see. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get to visit Roddy Kesh Prabhu. Nice. Our favorite astrologer. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. All right. How are you? Okay. Hey, you asked me that several times already. You know, what you said, you okay. said good, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I do not listen when you answer. <laughs> All right, now it would be the time that we switch over to Mara. Okay, Mara. Thanks for Mara. Mara cooked three meals yesterday, three big meals, including her vegan sushi for dinner. I cooked my vegan tempura. The tempura is very good. My tempura is very good. And uh, great burritos yesterday for lunch. Pancakes. And spelt pancakes with Banjo Mike's maple mm -hmm. syrup it was great. Um, all right. We have Cult of Cain Asana class today for our Patreon members at 1030 Eastern time. Back to your cover group meetings at 1230 and one and also in person meeting this evening at the Bhakti Center. Hmm. What time does that take place at the Bhakti Center? In the evening, I believe it's <laughs> seven or seven thirty, but you can check back to your dot com for details. Very good. Thank you. Are you ready? We got a big nugget. Okay. I think we did this nugget once before. Or part of it, maybe not. You're re nugging the nuggets? I don't normally do that. 
but um, I'm almost sure it was an ugly, or at least we discussed this at some point in our history, but it was a long time ago in any case. And I think we didn't do like the whole thing. This is like a long one, but it just kind of popped up into my world uh, this morning. And I thought, hey, well, why don't we bring this back out? I like people who use three names. I like one name people. Like I like Raghunath, Batman, Madonna. You know, I like one name people, but three name people is pretty cool too. All right. George Bernard Shaw. Okay. David Charles Wilson. David Lee. Mara Roth. Simons Jones. David Lee Roth. Do we have any more you could think of? Oh, I'm sure there's plenty out there. Okay. So this Dwight is George D. Eisenhower. Less than initial. The, the initials, yeah. Um, anyway, Delano who was Roosevelt. George? Yeah, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. That's a good one, too. John Quincy Adams. I think it was more popular to do this. Maybe it was in the old in the days. days. Yeah. Um, Your question no, was? No, I'm stuck in three names now. Who was George Bernard Shaw? Who, yeah, who's George Bernard he was Shaw? He a writer. He was one of the most, I think, after Shakespeare, he was like the most influential writer really? from England. Yeah. Pretty okay. sure. That's how little I know. I hate when there's things that everybody know and you don't know them. Right now, nobody knows what we're about to read, Ragnar. <laughs> I know. I'm about to enlighten them with okay. something that I just took off the internet. Okay. This is the way, this is the true joy in life. What? The being used for a purpose, recognized by yourself as a mighty one. The being thoroughly worn out before you are thrown on the scrap heap. The being, the being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little quad of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm of the opinion that life belongs to the whole community. And as long as I live it, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. Mm -hmm. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. The harder I work the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is not brief candle to me. It is a sort of splendid torch, which I have got a hold of for the moment. And I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to the future generations. George Bernard Shaw. I like that. It sounds like George Bernard is kind of identifying with the body in the sense that he thinks this life is it. Well, yes, I get it. But, I, there's, but still, still. there's still a point there. I want yeah. this life to be of use, of value. Um, the first thing that comes to me, this the, the true joy of life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. You know, it's, I, I, I sometimes pray like this because, you know, no one wants to feel used. If you have a friend that used you, someone used you for your money, someone used you for your fame, someone used you for your body. We, with this concept of being used or he used me, it's like, it's like a horrible thing where someone reduces you to a thing that they can enjoy. It, it, it depersonalizes you. But to be, but I pray, oh, Krishna, use me. Oh, Guru Maharaj, use me. Oh, Krishna, how can you use my body, my talents, my thoughts, my dreams, my, you know, use me, use me, and I will feel appropriately used. Not just like used for your own selfishness, someone else's selfishness, but for God's uh, intents and purposes. Mighty purpose. For God's mighty purpose. I love that. What else are you taking from What else? I'm taking a, 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 yeah, and I want to be full. Oh, here's another thing. Sometimes we think like we get caught up in so much busyness of the world. And not, a, not just busyness of the world, but busyness of the mundane world. We get busy doing nothing. I say that a lot. Busy doing nothing. And then we feel like the remedy for being busy doing nothing is just to do nothing. We start to think, yeah, busyness is bad. It's overwhelming. I need personal space. I need to put up boundaries. I need to do nothing. No, you need to do something substantial, something that's contributory. Right? Get my point here? Mm -hmm. So it's not... The, the opposite of doing too much nonsense is not to do little nonsense. It's to do something substantial. So he wants to be he wants to be fully worn out when he dies. Mm -hmm. But it's not like he's saying, OK, now I'm just going to cash out. I've sold all my stuff. I've, I've got out of the, the corporate world, climbing the corporate ladder, and then I'm just going to go to Panama and live on a beach. Uh -uh, that's not what he's saying. 
It's busy. Busyness sure. till you're loud. I want to die preaching. Okay. It's preaching. I, you know what? Preaching, the word preaching, I stopped saying it for years. It's back in vogue. Preach. <laughs> I'm a preacher. Okay. Okay. Thought I'd share that. Thank you. And it seems like he's kind of, you know, it was interesting in our in our meeting yesterday because we're we're trying to define our core values. Yes. And in doing that, we kind of looked into the podcast itself and saying, what what is it that we're trying to embody? What are the essential things that are there? Mm -hmm. One of them had to do with it being rooted in the tradition, you know, the, the authentic bhakti tradition we want to present. We want to present that as it is something real, something authentic, uh, make sure that gets across. But we also wanted to uh, be sure that it sometimes when when tradition is too tightly uh, interpreted, then it doesn't actually reach people or become transformational oh, yeah. for people. So we wanted also to be innovative and, you know, branch it out so that it's relatable. Mm -hmm. And then the, th the third poor principle we looked at when we were really thinking, what are we all about? What is it? It, it seems like he's touching on it here, but uh, this is what we wrote. Oh, good. I got it here. It's focused on the essence, mm. keeping our mission at the forefront. We avoid diversions. Uh, such as non-constructive criticism, gossip, Boom. and politics. Go slow. Non-constructive criticism. We yeah. avoid non-constructive criticism. Gossip. Gossip. And politics. And politics. And, and, you know, by saying politics, it doesn't mean that we can't have any political convictions, but it just means that we don't get diverted into the, in, into the again, maybe non-constructive, constant back and forth that people are very prone to to get caught up in, particularly in these days of 24 hour sure. news cycles and all of that. So in the worst political climate, you can become very Krishna conscious. You can even if you hate your president, even if you hate your government, even if you're sitting in a prison. Well, hopefully you don't hate them. No, but if, no, you're, no, right. if you don't if, feel if you don't, if you don't align with yeah, your, you know, your government, yeah. it doesn't mean it's a disqualification from being Krishna conscious. No. And, and he, what he's saying here is He's saying, I, can, I have a choice. Either I can, you know, and I want to be clear when I read this, like he's saying, okay, I'm part of a mighty purpose. How I'm part of that might be in a very small way. It might be in a way that people don't even notice. It doesn't mean that you have to be mm. this writer that everybody in the nation knows and whose fame goes on for right. generations after. It doesn't mean you got to be bigger than life necessarily. Yeah, but but you're part of something that's mighty, even in your own small way. So he's saying, I have a choice to be part of that, to take all my energy and engage it in a way that's meaningful, and that makes me feel good, that makes mm -hmm. me feel um, th there's, there's a certain value in my existence that's being met, that's not being lost or squandered. Mm -hmm. And how do I squander it? He, he, I think he kind of got to the same kind of things that we're getting into, right? He says, um, instead of a feverish, selfish, little clod <laughs> right and he's it's good because we are these yeah, little feel things like a feverish selfish little clod i have and, and, and you know and he said of ailments and grievances complaining mm. that the world we would he says it like this will not devote itself to making you happy we would say <laughs> the world's not revolving around me right. right and and we our whole bhakti philosophy is saying actually it's all revolving around one dynamic principle now mm. this is the part that throws people off and that principle is a person. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, if there's another person, then I have just as much right to be in the center of that thing as anybody else. Actually, we don't. And that's OK, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because it's just as thrilling and wonderful to be revolving around that mm -hmm. that divine principle as it is to be that. As a matter of fact, that and this is the whole theology behind Sri Chaitanya's that divine principle, personal principle in the middle realizes that that the, the experience of revolving around that principle is even more ecstatic than being that principle. And he wants to take that role as Sri Chaitanya. Krishna takes that role as Sri Chaitanya. But that's kind of an esoteric thing. I, I, I like the point, though. You know, when we do, when we go to Vrindavan and holy places, we do parikrama. Krama means to step around. Yeah. And so the idea is that all these things in holy places, whether it's a sacred Tulsi tree or a temple or Govardhan Hill or even uh, Kailash, they all have like, 
they're trails you can walk around. And the idea is you're getting yourself out of the center yeah. and you're walking around these holy things or places. It's really good example you use because you feel a certain power. Like just like we we both just were recently at Govardhan. Right. And externally, if you just look at it, first of all, most of the time you can't even see the Govardhan Hill, right? Like, right. It's like half, maybe half the time you can see it, not even. Um, and we're saying that that hill is not an ordinary hill. Mm -hmm. that that hill is a, an entirely dynamic spiritual divine being and that by by symbolically in one sense we rotate ourselves around it we walk around the thing we right? do it barefoot you walk mm. 24 kilometer 14 miles around it a as an act of um sadhana as an act of like meditation but it the sim there is a symbolism in it that it's like I'm putting you in the center. I want to revolve sure. around you. And we do realize, we do feel tangibly that there is a powerful force. You know, there, there there's a there's a powerful effect, effect that it has on one's consciousness. I effect that it has on one's right now. Effect that it has on one's life. Um, I would he you know, when I interpret this in a bhakti framework, I can choose to be a feverish, selfish little cloud of ailments and grievances. This is going wrong. <laughs> I got to memorize that wrong. phrase. <laughs> yeah. Feverish, yeah. selfish little cloud filled with <laughs> ailments, and, ailments grievances. and grievances. It's complaining that the world will not devote itself to making me happy. The world is not meant to be devoted to making. Well, in one sense, the world is devoted to making us happy, but we have to learn to work with it. In other words, it's not meant to know. make us happy on the material level, but it's meant to turn us back to the real happiness. The, okay. the suffering that we that we experience in life is meant to be to have a reformatory kind of healing. You know, we're meant to kind what of reform school. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're meant to kind of realize, oh, I've been a selfish clod and this doesn't work. What's the alternative? And the alternative is to be part of that mighty, um, you know, principle, that mighty purpose, mm. which is divine love. Mm. And we all have the opportunity to make that. Choice. But we will get diverted if we're not very careful. Mm. And so we kind of defined it in our way. I think his way is more or less saying the same thing. Very right? articulate, though. He's very articulate. He's very you like articulate. that concept, reform school? That's Did what you it say is. That? Did you say reform school? You was it. that a phrase? What do you mean? Was that a th like some people say juvie? Reform school. That's reform that's school. That's a thing. thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> reform school. We're in reform school. Yeah, in a sense, we are. Yeah. So anyway, I, I think he he hit on a nice, you know, um, he, he it it's. In one sense, it was just kind of like a bold statement about how I want to burn out, on, you know, on the battlefield and, and, you know, go out in a flash of glory. In his one sense. But I think he, he was very insightful in terms of how we lose focus. You have excavated the previous nugget, which was worthy of Re recycle upcycling. Yeah. You upcycled the nugget. And I think I don't think we got that whole thing in there. And, and a lot of that was uh, some pretty interesting stuff. You know, it's another good person like George Bernard Shaw with three names. Linda, Linda, Linda. Uh, yeah, it's all the same. Name. <laughs> it's, it's, we call her Linda Cube now. <laughs> all right. Narayanam namaskutyanaram chayvanarotamam devim salasvatim vyasam tatojayam mudirayat. Before he signed the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest. One should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badreshu, Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, Bhakti Rabhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakya Chakshurun Mudutam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. You're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 6, Text 26 or 7. 26. Oh, I want to give a big uh, appreciation for uh, everybody at the D.C. Temple, including oh. Ananda Vrindavan. They're having a big, grand opening. If you're in the Washington, D.C. area, big, grand opening of their temple in Potomac, Maryland. Ananda Vrindavan is one of our sage group leaders. She's one of our sage group leaders. She's senior 
Vaishnavi temple president there. temple president and uh married to our good friend Raja Bihari that's right so congratulations yeah that should be an exciting event we're gonna drive right by I wish we could just pull over and stop but we're not gonna you could we could but we're not gonna no go ahead do it nah, we're not gonna. <laughs> we got a 14 hour drive we're gonna just keep driving that was 15 hours before when you said it earlier. yeah I went a little faster you just saved an hour you I could just, do it I just saved <laughs> I think spent an hour there I just saved <laughs> up an hour <laughs> Okay, so 26. Oh, we're back on this. So yeah, the Prahlad just, he's kind of, um, he's speaking to his little friends. He's uh, got all these insights and he's kind of like shattering previously held ideas. I think this is new for them. They said, you know, that they've been fed certain information their their whole little lives, huh. right? And and he's kind of cracking it, you know, and, and he's... He's speaking, it almost sounds like he's speaking against the good, pious, reasonable kind of life, you know, mm -hmm. Dharma, Arta, Kama, Moksha, that these four are seen as this is, this is, this is for the people that don't go off course. This is for the people that want a nice, safe path that moves in a very favorable, pious, religious way. And he's saying that there's, Th these steps are helpful for people that are really lost, but when you want to get to the deeper, true essence of life, you realize it's beyond these. Mm. And um, and and they must be sitting there saying, like, "Where did?" As a matter of fact, they're going to ask, "Where did you get this stuff? We've never heard this kind of stuff before. Who did you hear this from?" Let's dive in. All right. This is uh, not your ordinary five-year-old play date. No. Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, Religion, Economic Development, and Sense Gratification, are Re described... Yeah, or, not they, the Moksha. Oh, that didn't say Moksha. Yeah. I just said religion, Dharma, Artha, and Kama. Dharma, Artha, and Kama. These are described in the Vedas as Trivarga, or three ways to salvation. And kind of three steps moving towards yeah, it. Yeah, it's a big thing in Vedic teachings. Yeah. Um, someone asked a question about that this weekend too. Last yeah, two weekends, Q and A day. Yeah, or three ways to salvation. Within these three categories are education and self realization, ritualistic ceremonies performed according to Vedic injunction, logic, the science of law and order. Isn't that interesting? I think that means karma. Okay, right. It's the science of. Law I, I assume that's what it means. Actually, we could look in the translation, but that's what I'm assuming that it's referring to. And various means of earning one's livelihood. These are the external subject matters of study in the Vedas. Mm. And therefore, I consider them material. Mm. However, I consider surrender to the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu to be the transcendental. Yeah. How do you think his playmates reacted to that statement? The, I think they were, again, they had not heard this kind of talk before. <laughs> they, this was going beyond <laughs> what... They had heard, apparently, even at that very young age, they're being trained up in this type of yeah, thinking. Yeah, okay. And so they're wondering, our teachers, they're going to say, Prahlad, we've only had these two teachers, and um, you can't even leave the palace. Where did you get this? Where did you get stuff? this stuff? Yeah, but, you know, as I'm, as I'm hearing it, you know what, what conversation this reminded me of? What? Was the very fascinating conversation between Sri Chaitanya and, and Ramana Roy. Roy and Ramana Roy. Yeah, that 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 th this is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita which is the book that really captures this type of Chaitanya Vaishnavism, right? This 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 bhakti um tradition that, that stems from Sri Chaitanya. And in that in that uh biography of his, which is it's more than a biography, right? It's a it's a book that does tell of his life and his travels and right. so on. But it's also the whole thing's peppered with the refined ref philosophy of bhakti yoga. In detail, B bhakti is eternal. Yeah, loving of God is eternal. But it's sort of a vague term. Like I could say, I love. Well, you love what? Or I love my, my I love my kids. Well, what does that actually mean? And so, you, Chaitanya Charitamrita gives refined understanding of what love of god is in a really understandable way although it's it's infinitely deep yeah right? it, it's infinitely deep but it's also probably the most essential teachings out there yeah it, the fact that you and me a couple 
a couple losers from the Lower East Side. <laughs> we we're we're getting we're get, we're attracted to it. Yeah, and and so there's about five or six really important conversations that he has. Was that an offense if I call you a loser as it's well okay. as me? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Forgive me. I, I'm the loser from the Lower East Side. <laughs> You yeah, were right you were a you. diamond <laughs> in the in the rough in the Lower East Side. So 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 one of those conversations is he goes to South India and he encounters this Ramananda Roy, who's has the absolute deepest realizations about bhakti. Mm. And so they have a conversation in which Sri Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, is becomes the questioner, mm -hmm. and he gives the position of the answerer to his devotee, right? And he's saying, your answers are the most incredible answers. No one else could give answers. He's saying, I'm just speaking because you're making me speak this way. You're empowering me to speak this way. And he's encouraging. Tell me more. Yeah. And Tell so, me more. And so he begins with this simple question, you know, like, describe for me what what's the highest, what are the highest goal? What's the highest goal in life? You know, mm -hmm. where's, where's life meant to go? And he begins on this, in one sense, it's a valid answer but not for someone who's looking for a deeper essence, right? So he begins by talking about dharma, right? That if one follows their dharma really well in life, that it leads to the really good results, mm -hmm. right? And that's called, you know, dharma and how karma responds to that, right? If I'm, if I'm, um, if I, you know, I you're just looking totally spaced. You're like, oh. <laughs> you give me the dead eye. You know what? I was just thinking, what if I just died right now? I was just thinking about that. Yeah, I knew you were thinking about something like that. <laughs> what if I just died? What would it be like? Well, you'd be dying here in the Bhagavatam, so that'd be good. I know. I know. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, well, maybe I should just die. Right maybe I should just, I'm going to have to die sometime. Why not die while hearing the Bhagavatam? So, so he good asked, catch, good catch that you caught me. It, it wasn't very difficult. <laughs> I wasn't that staring <laughs> down like <laughs> if you've ever had a conversation and the person just <laughs> staring off <laughs> without blinking oh there's a whole a downward direct a whole studio <laughs> audience <laughs> watching me okay. so 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 he had you know this is where he starts he starts by speaking about dharma that there are rules in society and that if you follow them it makes you a better person. It brings out the good mm. in you. It protects you from from wandering off in the wrong direction, and it serves society. So it's selflessness. It's it's a selfless act to say, "I'm going to be a good father. Sure, I'm going to be a good husband. I'm going to be a good mother. I'm going to be a good wife. I'm going to be a, in my business dealings. I'm going to be ethical and bring something good into that world. You know, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, be very conscious of whatever." flaws I'm prone to and counter them through dharma. If if I if I have a tendency to towards greed, I'm going to counter that through giving charity. If I have a tendency towards um arrogance, I'm going to counter that through acts of humility. Except, and that's all laid out in the in the dharmic text, right? So that's where Ramananda Roy began. And Sri Chaitanya said, yes, but give me something higher. Give me something that gets more to the essence. And he climbs up this ladder of teachings that come out of these sacred texts mm -hmm. that keeps climbing up until he starts to start talking about pure bhakti, right? No, actually giving your, your heart and soul to devotional service. Okay, that's getting warmer, you know, I'm, but keep going, keep right. going. And then he, he develops bhakti up to the point of the very special bhakti, the love of the residents of Vrindavan that they have for Krishna. Because that is something very special, something very moving, something you know—it's an esoteric idea, but it's—it's—it's it's, um, it's getting to the deepest essence of existence. And he's saying, "Now you're getting somewhere, but keep going." You know, it gets to the love of the gopis, that this the, the intensity of their love, uh, the 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 complete um, loving surrender that's there in their devotion is 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 particularly special now you're really getting somewhere keep mm. going he gets to the love of Srimati radharani and that's like it builds to that here there's something similar going on right Prahlad is saying we're being taught about be dharmic and you'll get good results from that economic development will come you'll enjoy life mm. you know because but in this in this dharmic way mm. in this comma your desires will be fulfilled um and ultimately if you follow this path Correctly, it leads to moksha, where you let go of everything and you enjoy some 
peace. So, and he's saying, he's not saying that these things aren't real, but he's saying these are on a lower level. What did he say? I consider them to be material. Is that what he said? Yeah. Like, I consider uh, these are external, external subject, subject matters. matters of the study of the Vedas. Yeah. And therefore, I consider them material. However, there's something beyond that. There's something that gets more to the essence of, of, of life. I consider surrender to the lotus feet of the of Lord Vishnu to be transcendental. Right. And we that, never sort of uh, got caught up in the Vedas. Most of us got, never got caught up in Vedic teachings. The, yeah. We just met a devotee who is a bhakti Vedanta. You know, devotees that were, this is the goal, and we just were taught just to jump on to pure devotional service as the way, the truth, and the light. Yeah, it's it's this. It's there in Bhagavad Gita where where our where Krishna is instructing Arjuna, let go of the these flowery teachings of the Vedas that are promising you happiness in this world there's something beyond that and you're worthy of what's beyond that now, mm. now move what Prahlad is doing here is the exact same thing he's saying that if we're getting trained up in a certain way we can go beyond that there's something far those are just kind of like rudimentary steps in one sense i mean they're huge steps for if our society lived by it would be a tremendous, yeah, like a, if, a, if a this tremendous was embraced, upgrade. it would be a tremendous, a tremendous upgrade, upgrade. Um, from just pure selfishness sure. and, and, and recklessness in life. But um, that's what we've been saying for the last few days on uh, on this these verses. Yeah. Like we can't even hold together a family in Kelly. Yeah, right. Whereas it, it, these are the things Dharma. to regulate us and have us, you know, curb our desires for unrestricted sense gratification and we can't even keep it together it's, you know it's it when you you got yeah we really have to it's a really interesting example that you used you know just holding a family together whatever what what is it that causes so much uh tension dissension you know um a, a fracture in our relationships suffering in our world it, it, if we go back to george bernard shaw right we we're not not only are we not all feeling part of some higher mighty purpose but we're but we're not feeling part of a higher mighty purpose that's unites us sure and and, and so we become these clods because we watch films Ooh. we read books Ooh. we we get impressions in our Ooh. mind that i'm meant to be enjoying life in a certain way sure so like when we think of marriage perhaps we have you know, years and years and years of childhood development, watching what uh, a, a romantic relationship is, what is what the kind of happiness and excitement that it's meant to deliver. Which is based on, as Carlos is saying on the message board, mm -hmm. I, me, and mine. Yes. I, I, I want to be happy for my marriage. I, I yeah. want to be happy having kids. Yeah. I want to be happy having a home. I, and it's still based on even how I can enjoy this. Instead of like, I'm here in reform school. I'm here to contribute to something bigger. Yeah. The family unit is part of a bigger mission. And because of it, there's like, I'm not getting my needs met. And I'm coming into this relationship with a, a, a bag of desires and needs and expectations. That will never be fully met. That can never like be fully like met. they are in the movie. Like, exactly. <laughs> right. And so here, you know, when George Bernard Shaw said, um, I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community. That's not like a necessarily like a socialist kind of statement it, on the on the on the existential level. Mm -hmm. There's an important truth in that. Right. That, that we're all kind of part of one spiritual family that are in our happiness. The happiness that we aim for should be on that spiritual level. It means I can operate in a in a selfless way in this world. My marriage doesn't have to be about me fulfilling these desires that have been implanted in my head by watching movies my right. whole life. I can't see myself as a servant in that marriage. And when everyone comes with that service attitude, then we're all revolving around that center, you know, like yeah. in, a, in a smooth, harmonious way. But we suffer so much because we because we have these it, it's it's deeply ingrained. If you just ask anyone on the street, you know, like in general, we're trained to think that this world is meant to move for my happiness. Mm. And and that's why we become these feverish clods. <laughs> Feverish clod. So, 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 Prahlad's pointing to this higher, this idea that's beyond working well within the material. He he's saying we've been given these laws of how we can operate well within the material realm, 
but there's something way beyond that. Mm. And now he's going to get to that. Okay. Text 27. Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the well-wisher and friend of all living entities, formally explained this transcendental knowledge to the great Saint Narada. So this conversation has been happening. Yeah, you know, you know what sage level we're on. Yeah. <laughs> we're on sage level four. Okay. If, if you're in the, if you have no clue what he's talking about right now, it's like, I don't either at this point. Oh, I'll tell you. We're stories within a story within a story like that. That's what the Bhagavatam starts with, with, um, with Sutta Goswami speaking to the sages of Naimi Shrani. That's where we open in chapter one. Mm -hmm. By calling that sage level one? That's sage level one. Okay. By the time we get to the second canto, is Sutta is telling about the conversation between Sukadeva Goswami and Maharaj Parikit. So that's stage level two. Right? So it's all like this, you know, me and Kasuba having a conversation. And it's like saying, oh, this reminds me of another conversation had between Mara and Linda, Linda, Linda. So now we're on and, then, and then we're in that conversation. And they're like, oh, this reminds us of another story. So we're sort of like in a dream within a dream within a dream. Right. And so then the then what Sukadeva Goswami is describing to Maharaj Parikit is the conversation between Narda and Yudhishthira. That's what this entire canto is. The seventh canto is Narda speaking to Yudhishthira. Uh -huh. And and Narda is telling him a story about Prahlad speaking to his schoolmates. But Narda is actually going to become a character in the story now. Oh, that's interesting. Right? He's that's like, yeah. Talking about someone else talking about you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Um... Such knowledge is extremely difficult to understand without the mercy of a saintly person like Narada. But everyone who has taken shelter of Narada's disciplic succession can understand this confidential. This knowledge. is so, you know, we can't just zoom past that. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so I already did. I <laughs> yeah, just rolled it up. <laughs> because I, it reminds recently, well, here's the point I'm okay, addressing. Here he goes. That um, these texts. It's not that you just, what is it? Vedeshu Dorlubam Adorlubam Atma Bhakta, right? That Vedeshu Dorlubam. We don't understand these higher truths simply by opening up the book and reading it. Sure. It's Dorlubam. It's very difficult to, 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 to get. Yeah. You know, if you've ever been to one of those bookstores on metaphysics and spirituality and you open up one book, it's like, what do they mean by that? <laughs> then you open up another book. It sort of contradicts what the other one just said. You go back to your book on crystals. How does how is this thing spiritual? How are, how is an amethyst spiritual? I don't know, but that I out. should probably buy it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so did so, you ever have an amethyst? I, used to I don't even know what that is. Amethyst. You know what an amethyst is? No idea. They help the mind. <laughs> you send out vibrate. You put it in water. It has the same vibrations as the mind. They say you had this thing working. This purple. Come on, these beautiful purple stones. Did it work? Oh, yeah, look at my mind. <laughs> what did it do? <laughs> you know, if those, it's, it's a it's a crystal? It's a, it's a stone. If those have any flaws in them, then they can have the opposite effect. Ooh, maybe <laughs> that's what happens. <laughs> they gave me a flawed amethyst, a discount. <laughs> They're like, take this one, it's cheap. <laughs> so, hey, but the point is that these texts, the tradition, Always the tradition. Mm -hmm. We don't read about people that just read the book and became enlightened. We read about learning it through teachers. Yep. That they're teachers that represent it. Not just teachers that teach it academically. Mm -hmm. Teachers that embody these teachings and convey them. Yeah. It's always learned through that, in in a sense, interpreter. Isn't it interesting to, yeah. to not learn but where you can study bhakti, but not from a practitioner. There are bhakti. people that know it in They're, detail. They, like in detail, scholars they study it. Yeah, it's like learning cooking from a person who doesn't cook. Yeah, or snowboarding by a person who never snowboarded. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. It's like you have to live what you're teaching, or else you can't really pass it on. And and it's important for so many reasons. There's an esoteric reason why it's important, particularly when it comes to bhakti. Is because the whole faith is there that it has. It's a very personal. It's being given thing. to you. It's, it's being the, given the, to the you. The guru gives it, and to that's you. the only way that it comes. It it only comes through people. You can't say I want to get into bhakti, but avoid other people. Yeah, I want to purchase it. Can yeah. I purchase bhakti? <laughs> Can I get it on Amazon? Just <laughs> bhakti. <laughs> it's received, and that's one of the reasons why <laughs> Rupa Goswami says that it's very rare, because you you receive. It's it it it's, it awakens in you through the association of people that have it. Buy now. Awakened in them. 
right? Prime. Bakhti so, on Prime. So I'm going with this one. Yeah, I can realize that. <laughs> um, and so and so I love here's that. here's an so that's one re- that that's an esoteric reason why it's important. Here's a practical reason why it's important that we that we only learn this through people that know it and embody it and teach it. I was recently speaking to like a group of yoga, it was like a yoga teacher training. Where? It was online. Who? It was <laughs> I was leaving it. I was purposely leaving it a little oh, general. Secret, secret. <laughs> yeah. But but not that it's a big deal or anything. Okay. Um, but uh, I was asked the same question like about four different times um, because people nowadays are very concerned about the social implications of these teachings, right? Like in other words, if you read something about karma, well, does that mean that we well, couldn't try to do anything for anyone's well being. Yeah, or their, it's their destiny, or it's victim blaming. You know, if someone's has some unfortunate circumstances, you're saying it's their fault without identifying the yes. oppressor. And and, it's, yes. <laughs> and so, you know, I was explaining that within the tradition where the teachings of karma come, there's also the teachings of compassion. Sure. And so, so, so you can't pick this part and not apply the that full part. part sure and in order to get that you have to get it you, you that's explained through the teacher who's saying don't misinterpret this don't misuse this this is always engaged in a spirit of compassion sure. if you don't have that teacher that's emphasizing that you could take you could take it and draw all kinds of conclusions from mm-hmm. it you could misapply it in so many ways but you have that person that embodies that embodies the entire thing and that helps us keep focused in, in, in the right way it helps counterbalance any misinterpretations helps bring Good out answer. the full teaching right? answer but it wasn't satisfying because i could see that they, then they asked they, again they, and i had this i had to give the same answer about four different times really yeah because it's what a it's, pain <laughs> it's a, it's such a no actually i mean it's good were, were they like ex- was it like people were growing? There's two different ways. I felt people s- want to learn, yeah, and they want to understand, and that's a good thing, and they want to question, and we it's encouraged in this Vedic discourse. But it's what it's, it's when they have their feet planted in the ground of this yeah. is wrong, and I'm here to defeat you. That's yeah, it's just like you're not here to learn anything. I, I right? felt I can't say because it was through Zoom and all that, but but I felt some people were definitely like, okay, I get that, that's satisfying. Others, I can't say for sure whether they were just totally dissatisfied with the answer or not. Yeah, some already have their conclusion made up. Yeah, some, you know, we can get into a whole psychological analysis of that, right? But some people feel the need to embody, to, I am the um, person protector. that, yeah, the protector, the protector of, of truth and righteousness. Yeah, the warrior of it. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and they may not be willing to hear anything because they've embraced that as their identity. They may not even be effective at it. They may not even embody the true spirit of it, but they've, they've created an identity around that. Mm -hmm. And when we create a false identity, it, it it can very easily block us from our true progressive thought, you know? Yeah. So in any case, he's saying, you know, here it's saying that let's read it again, that um, such knowledge is extremely difficult to understand without the mercy of a saintly person like Narada but everyone who has taken shelter of Narda's disciplic succession can understand this confidential knowledge. The more we study our own spiritual life, reflect on our spiritual life, it's people on a regular basis who have spoon fed. I say spoon fed because it's like a mama feeds a baby. Ooh, a little spoon. <laughs> you want to take the spoon? A little spoon fed us bhakti. To, and, they, and also it's like they didn't shove it down our throat. They gave us as much as we can put in our mouth and digest. Yeah. And there's been people like that who have given us bhakti. Yep. It, we would not understand it if yeah. we just picked up these books and tried to read them on our own. Now, now he also, this term here in the translation, confidential knowledge, that, and that's, that becomes important. Um, but I think it may come out in the next verse. Why don't we read 28? 28. Prahlad Maharaj continued, I received this knowledge from the great saint, saint Narada Muni who is always engaged in bhakti and devotional service. This knowledge, which is called Bhagavad Dharma, mm. is fully scientific. You try, you, you do A, and then you get the result, right? It is based on logic and philosophy and is free from all material contamination. Okay. So he was just saying that this other knowledge is on the material level, right? The Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. 
he's saying, but there's another kind of dharma. There's a, a deeper dharma, a dharma that's that that gets to the deepest essence of life, and that's called Bhagavad Dharma, right? That that dharma, that that that, and again, we could look at the word dharma, right? And we can define it in two ways. It it can mean it can refer to the purpose or the duties that, that, that we have in life, right? My dharma is to be this, you know, for this time in my life, you know, to be a good father, right? right? That's, that's my purpose. It's a purpose of mine. It's a duty that I have. It might come out in particular, there might be particular regulations or mm. something that, or, or responsibilities that define that dharma. Mm. And dharma, all, the word is also meant to, to refer to something uh, more fundamental than that, something mm -hmm. more essential than that, which means the, the my essence, right? And that that is something that doesn't change with time, doesn't change with circumstance. That's that by my essence, at, at my very essence, I'm a a, a a divine, eternal lover, deeply connected with that supreme source, right? That that that, but that it's a bhakti essence. And so here, saying there's a Bhagavad Dharma, mm -hmm. right? There's a Dharma beyond being good in this world and receiving good results from it. There's a Dharma that connects you mm -hmm. to that Bhagavan, Bhagavat Dharma. That's it. He's saying it's fully scientific. It's real. It, it there's, you can understand it. Um, it, it makes sense logically and philosophically. It's very strong in those areas. It's, it's not something that's in, entirely. Um, it really does make sense, doesn't it? It, it, it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. And, and so anybody, oh, if you just hear this stuff it all, make, if anyone's got any issues, it's not with the philosophy. It's always like the philosophy makes sense. Well, unless you be your bent in certain ways, you don't want to hear it, but it's, it's just consistent. It's solid. It's deep. Yeah. 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 Now he he's, he's calling this Gyanam, this, there's this confidential knowledge. Gyanam vigyanam samyutam. Gyanam vigyanam, which means this knowledge. Here we're getting the translated as confidential knowledge. Vigyanam samyutam, combined with its knowledge, combined with its practical application, it becomes realized knowledge. Realized knowledge. Right. Yeah, and uh, and so he's saying he, he's saying this is something that you can uh, apply your your logic to, apply your philosophical thought to. It holds up. This is something that you can imply in, in your life, and it, it it goes beyond just a theory, mm. and it becomes deeply realized. And it's confidential because it speaks to that most essential um, message mm. of, of of divine love. And and one could say, well, if it's confidential, it's right here in the book. What, how secret or confidential is this? It's not hearing it. It's not confidential in the sense that nobody gets the chance to hear it except some exclusive group, but there's an exclusive group that's capable of understanding it, hmm. and that in that in the in what excludes one or allows one has nothing to do with a lot of the qualifications that often apply in in the academic study or even yogic study or you know Vedic rituals etc. It, it's not Vedic rituals. It's not intelligence. It's also not renunciation or detachment. Which it's not cap. It's in, not gender. It's, it's not, not none of these it, things. Yeah, it, it's, it's sex. It, sex. Yeah, it's it's, it's confidential because it has to do with the state of one's heart, a state of non envy. This this is what Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita when he speaks of confidential knowledge. Because you're not envious, because you're a devotee, because you're my friend you can understand this confidential knowledge. Sometimes there's that ego really blocking the way from understanding truth. That's why like in the, like I love the 12 step program uh, and the people that are coming out of that. Well, generally it's, okay. they've been, their ego has been crushed, <laughs> crushed, crushed down <laughs> and all they have is God. <laughs> right. And so, and a lot of us too doing this practice is like, we no, this is silly. This is crazy. This is weird. And then all of a sudden, our ego just is devastated. Like this makes one hundred well, percent sense. That's the this reform is, school that you're talking yeah. about. It's like, oh, you you've got a certain pride in something very to to us it seems significant, right? I've got this position in society. I've got this job. I've got it. these possessions. I've lost it I've, all. And then you lose it all, and you're <laughs> like, I okay, what am I now? You know, right. did, who am I? What am I? It it, it it's it's said that 
Krishna can take everything away. In a moment. And, 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 in a moment. And it can be the greatest mercy that we have to, to actually achieve the goal of all of this. To, you to you want to hear my Instagram post today? Okay. I think you're going to like it. It has everything to do with what we just said. All right. Okay. So it's, it's not a squirrel at all. It's not a squirrel. Okay. May your worst disappointment yes. lead you to your greatest answered prayer. It can do that for you, right? Everybody like that in comments right now. <laughs> <laughs> and share. And share. Drop a heart. Drop a heart on that one. <laughs> yeah. Drop a heart. Double tap. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so again, um, Prahlad is pointing to this higher, more sensual knowledge. He's explaining that we understand it through another person that's got it. He's explaining that it's confidential, that not it's not revealed to everyone. Mm -hmm. His 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 the other kids are looking at him like, where in the world does this come from? How is Prahlad learning about this? And I, I think we just have two more verses or so. Oh, uh, 654. Yeah. 20, text 28. Prahlad Maharaj continued. I just read that. Without Mara here scrolling around, I'm lost here. <laughs> text 29 and 30. These are the last two verses. The sons of demons replied. So the kids are talking to Prahlad now. Yeah. Dear Prahlad, neither you nor we know any teacher or spiritual master other than Sunda and Amarka. Okay, so he just said you have to learn this from someone right. that embodies this from this great teacher. They're like, what teacher are you talking about? Right. The sons of Sukra, they're the sons of Sukracharya. After all, we're children and they are our controllers. For you especially, who always remain within the palace, it is very difficult on to, to associate with a great personality. Dear friends, most gentle one, would you kindly explain how it was possible possible for you to hear Narada, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you hear him from? Yeah. Right? Kindly <laughs> dispel our thoughts in this regard. Yeah, you heard this from Narada. Where'd you get it from? But Narada doesn't come into Hiranyakashipu's palace. Does he? Yeah, what a, you know, yes. yeah we've never seen him around here. So, so this is a question. This question is going to lead to the entire next chapter. Uh, Prahlad is going to tell us how he met Narada. But the interesting things here, too, is that... Um, the 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 kids are speaking to um to to Prahlad. Mm. and when they speak about him if their words you know they're they're meaningful and bhagavatam is kind of like framing out all these meaningful statements right so he says dear friend yeah most gentle one yeah. would you kindly explain how it is possible for you to hear narda so uh, in one sense we're we're seeing the um very polite little sons of demons they're very polite they're they're approaching in the mood of a disciple with that sense right um it's faithful it's respectful but they mention this the, the word here is saumya dear friend most gentle one now if we go back to the very first chapter the, the very beginning of the bhagavatam the sages of naimi sharanya are confused mm -hmm. right They're, they've all gathered there's they know they're liberated beings they were not ordinary beings they're, they're not like fishermen you know, well, there, there was a whole variety of different types of yogis and right. all, all people that are coming from the tradition that grows out of Vyasa's Vedic literature. Yeah. And they all shared in their concern for the, the future of humanity, knowing that Kali Yuga was coming on, this dark time was coming on. Right. They were trying to do something to bring some auspiciousness into this coming age. But it, the literature is so vast, they couldn't quite put their finger on what's the auspicious thing to do, you know? Right. They're trying all different kinds of things, and then they're all sensing, yeah, we haven't we hit do? it yet. What I, should we do? I'd imagine it's kind of like sometimes musicians are trying to write a song together, and like, eh, it's just not working. Yeah, you know? just, it's nothing. All cooking. the stages are like, what should we do? Yeah. Bold plungings, uh, crystals, <laughs> crystals uh, pyramid hats, uh, walking through a, what do they do when they put up the stones? They walk through. Walk through a uh, uh, walk on the burning coals, burning coals. Okay. Oh, what's going to be the way? That's... So, so they're not getting anywhere. They're doing like Vedic sacrifices, chanting mantras, you know, burning fires and, and chanting mantras and stuff. And and then when they realize ah, we're not getting there, they say we that we need to hear from the right teacher. And they identify Sutta Goswami as that teacher. And 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 they open up to him. I, I pulled up the verse here. Mm -hmm. They said. Um, they 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 open by saying you're senior amongst us. You're senior. You've got, you've got more experience. And and nobody understands 
all of Vyasa's teachings, all of this vast Vedic literature, the Vedas, the Upanishads, the, yeah. et cetera, nobody understands it better than you understand it. You're like a black belt here. But And then they say this, and because you are submissive, your gurus have endowed you with all the favors bestowed upon a gentle disciple. Isn't right? that interesting? First yeah. of all, submissive is such a dirty word. <laughs> oh, you're submissive, you weakling. But what that means is exactly if we go back to George Bernard Shaw, it's like it, you're yeah. not the grieving little clod. Right. You were able to complaining to grieving. open up and connect. Well, you're submissive with you're that higher eager power to hear. You're yeah. eager to hear. Eager to and, hear. And what else did you say? Saumya, right? Th these were the favors uh, bestowed upon a gentle, a gentle. disciple. Oh, yeah. you're gentle, sensitive. It's like we don't right? we don't like gentle people anymore. Gentle people are <laughs> gentlemen. Weak. Yeah, right. He's a gentle, and he's a gentle. Gentle. Soul. So, in other words, if you say, "Oh, yeah, it's my son. He's very gentle." You'd be like, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> Maybe we can toughen him up a little. <laughs> <laughs> I can work on him. <laughs> it, it's actually a very beautiful quality to yeah. be gentle. I would now to say a person, yeah, let's go to the gentleman's club. What does that mean? Yeah. You go to a bunch of hang out with a bunch of dirt bags. Yeah. You know, the gentleman's club. There is no such thing. A gentleman, a dandy. Is it, well, I say this anymore. I don't know. Dandy is what <laughs> a dandy is like a gentleman, isn't it? I think a dandy is some of the dresses and fancy clothes. Well, it's like a gentleman. But yeah, I, I think it's beyond a gentleman. Anyway, a gentleman yeah. is a, a, a gentle soul controls their mind and controls their senses right and, and and they're sensitive to other people and their experience you know like and only when you become sensitive like that do you open up and you begin to understand you know it's like when we're lost in our own little bubble we're insensitive to mm -hmm. others when we're when we're gentle when we're sensitive to others we're able to understand we're able to actually hear a message that comes to us and and beyond that we gain the heart of people you know, so like he's saying your gurus, they would say, oh, look at this. Just see the, the sensitivity of this person. I will give them all I have because they're a worthy recipient of it. Guess what? It's that time. It's that time of day when people say, come on and head to the. What's that from? I have no idea. I'm not at all. Interested. What is it? A coffee commercial? <laughs> you want the definition of dandy? Yeah, a man. I got it here. Go hit it. Oh, you hit guys it. are both on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a man who gives exaggerated attention to personal appearance. Ooh. I have a man unduly devoted to style, neatness, and fashion in dress and appearance. Dandy. Metrosexual. <laughs> Metrosexual. A dandy. Uh, I love that word. <laughs> He's a dandy. Well, now Wasn't you know it, what it means. Was that on Seinfeld, too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jerry's a dandy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, Krishna, use this body and talents for your mighty purpose. For your mighty purpose. The opposite of too much busyness is to do something substantial. That's right. Focus, we're going to focus on this right here. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? No. <laughs> Can I say it again? The opposite of too much busyness is to do something substantial. Okay. All right. Yeah. Avoid non-constructive criticism, gossip, and politics. It will just divert you from your higher purpose. Diversion. Main thing is just to keep the main thing the main thing. Mm -hmm. Get yourself out of the center and serve the divine person. Nice. Parikrama. Mm -hmm. The world isn't here for our enjoyment. It's our reform school. There's a band called Reform School, isn't there? Is there? No, you're thinking of girl school. Maybe it's girl school. All right. Learn. Probably had to be a band out there called Reform School. <laughs> Learn through teachers that embody the principles. Okay. That's how you learn it. My kids don't know what hooky is. I was like, you playing hooky? And they're like, what are you talking about? I was like, don't people say that anymore? Hooky? <laughs> Bhakti is exclusive and confidential based on our humility and heart. So we get it. Play hooky for Maya. Huh? Okay. <laughs> and? Oh, you just got to line up the music. Sure, I got it. I got it. Mara. And don't be a feverish, selfish little clod. Don't be feverish, selfish little clod. All right. Sex pistol song. <laughs> yeah, hey, <laughs> selfish little clod. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us. Hey, you got questions for Q and A day? Send them in, Miss Mara. Wisdom on the stage is one hundred eight at gmail dot com. Are we doing Q and A tomorrow? I think so. Oh yeah. Send those questions in. Wisdom of the stages 108 at gmail.com. 
No questions are, you might think, well, I got a dumb question. Yeah, that's okay. We're all a little dumb here. That's okay, send them in. Sometimes everyone loves those dumb questions. And if you feel like, no, this is really dumb, then write anonymous and we won't <laughs> let the world know how dumb you are. Oh, so the show tomorrow is at 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. tomorrow. Let's see where we'll be by then. And we're taking bets. Let's see where the minivan will be at 8 a.m. tomorrow. What time are you leaving? I don't know. I'm going to try to leave at 1 in the morning. I'm going to oh. sleep. I'm going to sleep. Wake up early. Be packed. There's a severe weather. Okay, what could go wrong? <laughs> this is 